Hello my dear sewing friends! Today we have a color blocking episode. That also means that we're going to be doing some serious scrap busting. And you know me, I like to work within a certain theme so that way I can kind of get into that zone, into that mindset and I really feel that that helps my creative flow. So last time during my color blocking scrap busting marathon I made t-shirts. This was actually was uh, one of the projects. If you haven't seen that video I highly recommend recommend that you do. It's going to give you a ton of ideas. But today, since we have colder weather on our doorstep, I am on the mission to make fun and creative long sleeve shirts and sweaters for this kind of season and weather. Uh, <laughs> fabric wise, I definitely have a mixed bag over here because uh, I guess that's what usually happens when we talk about fabric scraps, right? Uh, but today here we can find everything from like double burst polyester to French dairy on the thinner and on the thicker side. I do have a little bit of sparkle over here. Then we have some rib knit, some sweater knit. I do have a couple of remnants of woven fabrics, but usually when we talk about creating some Thing soft and cozy, especially for colder months. Usually we talk about knits, but with this assortment, we never know. So we just uh, we just have to get going and get doing, and we'll see what happens. always takes a little bit longer than I initially think that it would to sort out all of the fabric scraps but you know what it's the process that we have to go through and every time I kid you not every time my method of sorting the fabric changes sometimes it's by color sometimes it's by texture sometimes it's by the properties of the fabric stretch versus woven but it does help to go through the fabric so that way it jogs your memory about what are the things that you made like oh yeah I made a pair of leggings for my little one or oh I I made a hoodie for myself and kind of inspires you for future creations as well. So it is what it is. It looks a little rough right now, but I do feel that I do have a solid idea for my first project. Now let me tell you a little secret. If you are looking for, let's say, almost like a fail-proof option for your first color blocking project, you're sort of venturing into it, then starting with geometric shapes, lines, stripes of course, segments, this could be a really good example of that, is almost like a fail proof option and for my first project today sort of to warm up I want to use up these remnants of cotton French terry that I have in beige brown and white this time I want to play around with squares in my design and as you might know when you're working with fabric scraps it's constantly like a push and pull so you always have to keep in mind how much of each fabric I have and what would be the most efficient way to use it and because I have white French terry the most out of these three, I'm going to start by cutting one half of the front pattern piece in that white French terry and a sleeve as well. And from there it will give me an opportunity to determine what would be the best way to separate the other side of the front bodice and make it color blocked because proportions when you're color blocking are really really important. Now to cut the other side of my sweater that is divided into different colors, I'm simply using the first half that I cut out of this white French terry as a guideline and I'm folding it in at the mark that I have made with my little pin. Now of course you can do that on a paper pattern first and then put that on your fabric. It just depends on how comfortable you are with these kind of projects. And as a pattern for this design, I'm simply using my knit bodice block sweater adjustment. And I have a full video series on my channel about drafting the knit bodice block and doing all of the other adjustments step by step. So if you need a starter or a refresher, that can definitely be very helpful. Okay, I know that as of right now, it might look a little bit questionable, but you know, every project has that ugly stage, so to speak. Now I just have to cut the back pattern pieces and the sleeve. And looking at the fabric that I have left, I actually decided to reverse the back pattern pieces in the color scheme because partially I actually don't have enough of one of the fabrics to cut out the pattern pieces that I need. And also reversing it, I think will give it more of a visual interest. So let's get that done.
right, all pattern pieces cut, so that means it is sewing time. Now construction wise, it is as straightforward as putting together a t-shirt. The only difference is that first, I need to assemble all of those little pieces together. And here I decided to cover stitch each seam first to give it a little bit more visual interest. And obviously you don't have to do that, it's just a choice. But the extra stitch in some cases can give additional structure and support to the seam depending what fabric you're using, that might be really helpful. Now on the bottom here, which was a totally spontaneous decision, I decided to do this angled hem. Okay, only a few extra steps left and we are ready for the final result. that I personally absolutely love it. It is a winner for me because it's going to go really great with all of the other stuff that I have for winter. I have beige boots, uh, other garments that are in beige, cream, white, gray color scheme because I've noticed after myself that although I do love a bold and juicy and bright print and colors that during winter and during colder months I do gravitate towards calmer colors so this is definitely right up my alley and I think that combining three colors makes it even more fun. As I always say, simple doesn't mean boring and I think we have successfully achieved that here. Now you might not be a fan of these colors but I urge you and I encourage you to play around with the colors that you like, perhaps bright pink and bright green and throw a little bit of yellow in there or think about this way, maybe you want to do two solids and then a print and possibilities here are truly endless. Now the original project where I used the full yardage was this hoodie. actually. A really good project for color blocking as well and if you're interested I will leave the full tutorial for you guys as a link in the show notes underneath this video. surprising but I do have a little bit extra left of these fabric remnants. There's definitely not enough to make anything for me for a grown-up but I might be able to make a really fun color block uh, long sleeve shirt or sweatshirt for my daughter. So that's definitely going to be another adventure but right now I'm ready to move on to the project number two. Now this time it's also going to be with French Terry. On the thicker side I have this dried sage color over here and the original project for which I used the full yardage was a Christmas gift for my husband and I made a sweatshirt for him. Now I also have this really nice cream white color sweater knit backed with fleece. The original project for that one was this really cute drop shoulder cardigan and I want to take the dried sage, the cream white and marry them with a really fun and interesting technique. Judging by the amount of fabric that I have and by how irregular are the pieces, I think I will need to go with a reglan sleeve pattern because otherwise I won't be able to fit all of the pattern pieces into this fabric and I think even the reglan sleeve pattern is kind of questionable so I'll need to try to do my best to sort of finagle that in there and that's kind of like one of those things when you're working with fabric scraps. It seems that you have a ton of fabric scraps but once you start working with them it really is a lot less than you have expected because obviously you also have to account for grain line and the direction of the stretch and the direction of the print 
print if you're working with a printed fabric. But I do think that in the end, the raglan design is actually going to work out in my favor, especially for the technique that I want to do on the front of the sweater. Now for the pattern, I will be using a raglan sleeve top tutorial from my channel, so you can use that if you want to follow along. But of course, you can use any other pattern that you have previously drafted or perhaps purchased. As always, I encourage you to use what you already have and make the most out of it. So I did cut the pattern pieces, I managed to do that. Now before I start sewing them all together, which is the easy part, I actually want to create a beautiful rose on the front pattern piece. And I know that right now it sounds really weird and you're like, what is she talking about? But let me show you how it works. Usually you see me do applique right on top of the fabric. So I cut out a shape, interface it or not interface it depending on what fabric I'm using, place it on top of the pattern piece and then stitch right on top of it and ta-da, you have a really fun applique. This one is in reverse. So instead of putting the fabric on top, we're going to be putting fabric underneath and then cutting it out. So I have a fabric scrap over here to show you. First layer is going to be this dried sage and then I'm going to put a little bit of white right underneath like so. I'm going to grab my marker and I'm going to draw a heart. I'm going to add a few pins here just to keep it all in place. And now on my sewing machine with just a regular straight stitch, I'm going to stitch just outside the outline that I drew. is done comes the beauty of this technique. I'm going to grab my little scissors over here. It's really nice if they're quite sharp. And now I'm going to cut through the top layer of fabric only, not touching the layer of fabric underneath. And I'm going to cut just a little bit inside of the stitching line so that way it doesn't unravel. Once you're done cutting it away, you will have the shape revealed in the color of the fabric that you have placed underneath. And I find this technique really, really fun. So of course, this is just a sample. For the main project, as I mentioned, I want to do a rose. For that, I freehanded an abstract rose with just a simple pencil on my pattern paper. And after that, I roughly cut out the shapes of the petals. Now, once that was done, which did take a little bit of time, I did place the entire rose on top of my front pattern piece and I used a washable marker in order to transfer the image of the rose. Now, here, of course, you could have used, let's say, carbon paper or some other means of transferring the image of the rose, but this is what I had on hand, so it does work. As I said, it did take a little bit of time, but it works in the end. After that, I needed to cut and find big enough pieces of the white fabric in order to put them underneath to cover the entire shape of the rose. Then I followed all of the same steps that I showed to you previously on that little scrap piece of fabric. Let me share with you three quick and easy tips that really helped me with this technique. Number one, you don't have to have any specialty presser foot or learn how to use a new one. But what I did find is that if you do have a clear presser foot, it really helps because then you can see where you're going because rarely you're going to be sewing in a straight line using this technique. Number two, increasing the stitch length makes it a little bit easier and smoother, especially when you're going through multiple layers of thick fabric. And number three, if you are working with fabric that might be a little bit brittle or maybe fraying a bit too much for your liking for this technique, using a little bit of fray check definitely is going to solve that problem. So the rose is done and 
from here, I simply have to put this all together. Now, the sleeves are going to be sort of like bishop sleeves, so they're going to be gathered with a little cuff, and there's going to be a cuff on the bottom as well. But other than that, it's just a simple reglan top, sweatshirt, sweater, however you want to call it. So we've done this time and time again on the channel in detail, so I'm going to skip it right now and show you the final result. it goes together so well with these pants which are handmade as well these are from my knit jogger pants tutorial so if you want to make pants you also can and I also wanted to say a big big thank you to the members of this channel thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support and I wanted to remind you that there's a ton of members perks that you have but there's two in particular that I think are going to be really really helpful for a project like this the first one is a members extra video with five tips for better color blocking and the other one is a reference sheet on Google Drive, it's a PDF, where I give you multiple interesting ideas on how to spruce up your simple reglan sleeve pattern, so that way you can really have a ton of fun with it. So definitely check out your members' perks and make the most out of them. Oh, and you know what? I didn't make just one sweater. I thought, you know what? Let me play around with it with some other remnants. And I made a sweater for my little one using the same technique. I loved how this rose came out, so I decided to do the same. This time, the color combination is a little bit different, and you can see how it gives a really, really gentle vibe to the sweater. so it's no surprise that I wanted to conduct this experiment because besides creating really fun and interesting sewing pieces, I also want to make sure that each piece of clothing that I make can actually withstand wear, tear, play, weather, and washing and drying as well multiple times every time so that way whatever we make can actually serve us for a really long time because if you made it, if you love it, and I love this piece, you want to wear it for as long as you can. So of course, my daughter already wore her sweater to school and then I had my weekly laundry so this just came out out of the dryer and it held up really well so I can say that I am pretty confident in the longevity of this technique now again you might not be the biggest fan of this color combination but play around with it and the underneath layer doesn't have to be all one color you can grab colorful fabric scraps that you have and for each of the petals let's say you're also making a rose or a different flower so so each of the petals can be different color or you can keep it monochromatic or you can choose to do a letter, an animal, some sort of uh, shape or anything else that you would like. All right, two projects done. Well, two and a half if we count the sweater for the little one. So now let's move on to the third one. All right, so I know I'm deviating from my plan. These are not fabric remnants or fabric scraps, but I just can't get this out of my head. I'm really seeing this really fun color combination, so I think I'm just gonna go with it. I have two sweater knits. One is this burnt orange. One is this really dark, deep blue. I absolutely love both of these colors. I love both of these sweater knits. Uh, they're a little bit different one has this sort of like a longer hair to it and the other one is just pretty uniform but I think if I combine these it will give this a really nice fun bold combination for a winter sweater both of these are from my stash by the way and they were intended for separate projects which I will make for sure I just in this case I'm just not waiting for the fabric scraps or fabric remnants I'm just doing that first and after that I will tackle the separate projects Nine times out of 10, I would go with the reverse situation where you make the actual project first and then you work with what's left, but today's a different day. <laughs> 
today we're going with this plan. And the plan is to probably use my Knit Bodice Block Sweater Adjustment, the same one that we used for this first project, and then determine how many stripes and how wide I want them to be, and then cut that up from these fabrics. Now the mechanics of a project like this are really, really simple and both of the colors or three or four colors that you choose don't have to be the same width of a stripe. You can definitely play around with that. In fact, in a previous episode of this series, I did a striped t-shirt from three different types of fabrics. I believe two solids and one print and the width of the stripes there was different. So your imagination here is what takes the lead and takes the charge and after you combine all of the stripes into one full pattern piece, all you have to do is put it together like any other garment. So now let's take a look at the final result. petting it because it's so nice and fluffy and fuzzy and you know I really want to ask you to do one thing I don't usually ask about this but these videos do take quite a bit to put together so if you did enjoy or perhaps you got one two maybe three solid ideas for your next scrap busting project would you please give this video a thumbs up so that way I know on my end that yes you enjoyed and yes it would be fun to make more and more so that way we can all get inspired if you want to see another episode of this type here it is and I'll see you very soon in another video happy thoughtful sewing bye